Hey, what's going on everyone? It is David Palmer, the Leo King, and this is Deep Astrology, your weekly astrology forecast for the week of October the 14th through the 22nd of 2020. Oh, actually, it's going to be the 20th, I think, right? The 20th. I'm already jumping way ahead. If you never watched the show before, it is the weekly horoscope that is deep astrology. We go deep into the charts, but more importantly, I channel that horoscope, and it's here on HighVibe.tv. You're going to want to be a member of HighVibe.tv because not only do you get the show in its full form with the charts and all the aspects that I go through in it, but you also get my daily video horoscopes with tarot, and of course, you get my weekly sun sign horoscopes and my weekly intuitive weekly tarot and full disclosure and, of course, all the other programming that we have on HighVibe.tv. Don't miss it out. Make sure that you go to HighVibe.tv today. Now, I'm going straight into this horoscope because it is a, we are all having to go straight into life to figure it out. Pluto is one of the biggest parts of this week, believe it or not. I know that there's so many other things like a new moon in Libra everybody wants to hear about. Or we can talk about Mars square Jupiter. Or we can talk about Venus opposed Neptune. Or we can talk about Venus trine Jupiter, right? Like, you know, I mean, there's so many things. Or we talk about the Mercury retrograde opposed Uranus. We could talk about the Sun trying the North Node and then sextile the South Node. We could talk about the New Moon square Saturn. We could talk about the Sun square Saturn. I can go all day. We can talk about the quincunxes that we're going to see. We can talk about so many things, but Pluto, Sun square Pluto, right away. As you're watching in the beginning of this video, or if you're in the middle of the week, Wednesday, and the Thursday is Sun square Pluto on a dark moon. We have a new moon in Libra on Friday, but Pluto is being extremely at the point of a very triggering T-square. And now when you get Pluto as the pressure, this is about truth, revealing it, having to go deep into, and especially with the Mercury retrograde and Scorpio playing around, uh, this gets to the bottom of the barrel and goes to the gunk. And it happens to be in Capricorn, so it's like, I am getting to the gunk of the things that aren't straight in my life, that are not in aligned in my life, that feel like I'm not on my path in my life. And when you're dealing with Mars retrograde in Aries in its home sign, and it's like, I've already gone through the Saturn square for so long, now I'm having to go through this Pluto square, now I'm on my way to square Jupiter this week? Mars is frustrated. The sun is pretty much almost ready to give up. <laughs> I'm not even joking. Uh, the sun in Libra is at its fall position, and it's got to go through the Pluto and Saturn squares and a new moon in opposition to Mars retrograde while it's squaring Pluto and Saturn. So there's this gunk of how do I get my life straight? How do I make better choices? And also there's this hunger with Mercury retrograde that's trying to find buried treasure for a better world. Uranus and Taurus that we all want in our lives. And, and it, it, so it's getting to the deepest parts. And then the restrictive elements are so extreme because the last sun square Saturn was not in these signs. It was at the beginning of Taurus when the sun was in Taurus on April 21st and it squared Saturn in Aquarius. So the last time we had Sun square Saturn from Libra's perspective as the Sun in its fall position to a dignified Saturn, which makes it more frustrating, was exactly a year ago. Not to maybe the exact day, but when the Sun was in Libra and we actually had the South Node in Saturn. And so we were facing really karmic gunk. So that would have been more like, I would have been like October in my head, I'm doing it. It would have been about 14 degrees. So yeah, it would have been... Uh, you just got to do it in your head. September 23rd, seven days, another seven, about October 7th, I would say. So a year ago, and this is a week where we are slamming into brick walls. We are playing with gunk. No, not gunk to put into your hair like I do, but the gunk inside of change that we need to feel. And this is a new moon where we want to bring the newness and the balance and the harmony. And the good news is that's very possible, but talk about the pressure, a lot of pressure. And so that's, that's not easy sometimes in life. It's almost like we have to remember that in a moment like this, we all have to go 
Yes, there's major big choices in our life. This is the gunk. These are restrictive walls that we have really been just nonstop going through for actually years. Since Saturn entered into Capricorn December of 2017. And it's hard because this new moon and this sun, just in Libra alone, the moon in Libra and the sun in Libra just want to go have a really nice sunset beach, hang out with a partner and laugh and have a beautiful kiss and watch the sunset and then go to dinner and have the rest of the night go beautiful. But it's not going that way, it feels like, you know. Even though I did look at the sunset last night and I did feel the presence of spirit, creator and God, and that everything will be okay. So I want to remind people of that, that even though this is going to be one of those radical weeks in your life where it's like pretty much everybody feels like they're just over it, right? It's just like, I'm over this, I'm over that, I'm over this, I'm not. I, I mean, I just literally got over the way that a chart airdrops to my, 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 or my iPad that I do the show on. You know, I got to that point, right? So it's like, you know, it's just like, and it can be just so triggering out of nowhere. And with Mercury retrograde, remember, this is a three week long, okay? And it's exactly going to be in opposition to Uranus. It's going to really be a Mercury retrograde to find this buried treasure. That's what we're all doing. We're like, well, okay. And it's okay for you to go, I am going to be balanced by also being the best judge for myself. And even though this is so much dealing with people, it, 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 it's reminding yourself with Mercury, oppose you on us. You're going to do what you got to do in your own way. And you don't need to have somebody else's values get to a place to where you start almost one, manipulating yourself into thinking that you must do this situation or you must do this change in your life based off what somebody else is telling you to do. Or doing it because you feel bad for that person. So, you know, this is where people could take on way more pressure situations or continue the pressure to a point to where it gets so heavy in your life that the universe is just like, it reminds me, and this might get a little cryptic, but, you know, go watch Pink in the movie, The Wall. <laughs> Maybe you should watch that movie. It's a little cryptic, and there is a big judge on there, and, there, and that movie gets really, that movie is not a movie that really you leave the movie that happy with. And, and I think that it, it is a reminder, though, that, you know, can we slip down so far in our life to where we're really not living in the place that we really want to be based off the connections that we choose or just the connections that inside of where we fail ourselves and not allowing ourselves to live the harmonious life we want because of the choices that we make or the commitments that we make and the changes is, is going to come through experiencing that gunk. But it also is fearlessness with Mars retrograde in Aries, the hero inside that we have to all become because Mars is in its detriment, right? it's not its detriment, it's in its home, it's dignified. And so this is a strong Mars, no matter what. And it's going to score Jupiter. It's a major new story. A new identity, for some people, it might be full-blown identity, but this is you like, re-identifying the actions you're going to take and how you're going to take those actions. And more importantly, your belief systems. Like, you're going to have to believe when it's going to feel like you can't. Mars retrograde in Aries doesn't give you that extra will and doesn't give you that extra courage. And when it scores Jupiter at fall, it almost feels like, I don't know, this looks like it's bad. And it's going to all feel like it comes out of nowhere over this week from the, the 14th to the 20th. And I know it might sound crazy because it almost kind of feels like, no, I think everything's all right. But there's this creepiness to it all because there's a hidden element to it all. Because Pluto is squaring the sun. We also have Venus and Virgo at its fall position, and it opposes Neptune, while it will be trining over to Jupiter, while Venus will be quincunx Mars. So Venus, Pluto, both getting hammered, okay? Hammered. Because don't forget, Jupiter's with Pluto and Saturn's with Pluto. So not only is Pluto being looked at by this new moon in such an extreme way, 
but it also has, you know, Mars and squaring it, and then it's got Saturn and Jupiter, the two biggest planets that it's stuck in between. So talk about having to find bliss. Maybe it might come down to the most simple thing in life. Fucking just have bliss. And anything that's not you or not required anymore in your life to do anything that you are not feeling like you want to do at all. If you don't want to do it, and if anybody tries to make you feel bad, that's on them, that's not on you. And this is going to be difficult because hard, hard, hard conversations, hard, hard, hard choices, hard, hard, hard truths, hard, hard, hard courage and will to do that, and very difficult diplomatic aspects to make sure that you maintain unity of being that we are human beings, while at the same time, you've got to make sure that you're not taking the worst deal of your life. I know that may be like hard to hear, but it's like, this is the week of all weeks. If there would be a week that I would call it a rite of passage for those that, if they're ready to really have the willpower, have the belief, have the strength, have the ability to also not have to go hire some attorney to go fight for you for your life spiritually, but that you can within yourself be the diplomat and that you for yourself know and honor your own values in a way that you're willing to continue the journey towards the treasure you want. Because that's the problem. There's too many people who are not willing to go all the way to find their buried treasure here for a better life. It's like, there's fear, and I don't know if I, if I do that, how will it affect this, or how will it affect me in this way? Or this is going to be pressure cooker. And I know I've said pressure cooker a lot, but it's like pressure cooker, and the, this is not a tea kettle. I don't cook, so... I used to just throw, like, you know, spaghetti, like, in the pans and just turn on the, I don't even know what they're called, the burners, and just stir it around until it bubbled and then just said, okay, we're done, and threw the pasta on the wall until it sticks. And maybe that's how life is right now. And you're going to get a little dirty, but you're going to have to make whatever you want to make. And if anybody's trying to tell you, like, no, because I'm going to be honest with you, you know why I don't like to cook much? Because anytime I go cook in front of people, everybody tries to tell me how much better of a cook they are. Everybody tries to prove themselves. Everybody has a better recipe. Everybody has a better this. I'm like, go have fun fighting over who makes the food better. Fucking just make the food and I'll eat it then. I take the, other, the better position in life. Why would I want to just sweat? And why would I want to get all hot? And why would I want to get dirty? When all I have to do is eat and then I can say goodbye. That's why I like paper plates. Call me a bad person, but I don't want to have to do dishes. And I think that, you know what? We all are built in unique ways. And it's coming up with that uniqueness so intensely this week. And I would also like to say that, you know, having a positive disposition has always been looked at as, as, as like, oh, this person's either positive or they're negative. What if sometimes being positive is that you have to let out your negative because there are people in this world that hold things and they hide things and they don't release it. And the worst thing for your emotional, mental health and all those things and how you treat other people is the people who don't know how to let it out. And so this is where, gosh, you know, I know, I know if, a, if it's a full moon, even though it's a new moon this week, there's always the, 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 you know, the description of like some wolf that is just like, woo, like howling into the moonlight. Why is that? Why do they? Why do they do that? Maybe they're saying, F you, I'm trying to sleep. Or maybe they're saying, thank you, because you're giving me light to go get my prey. <laughs> Depends on the wolf, I guess. But with Pluto, are you, you know, it's the wolf in chief's closing. It's, it's like Little Red Riding Hood in that wolf. And I would say that, you know, it's like... Are you falling into that trap? Are you falling into the trap of, I'm going to let an outside source, Pluto, that's hidden, that has an agenda with Saturn, dictate my 
law, constitution of myself, harmony and balance, and what I define as what I need, what I am hungry for, what my treasure is, and what my world looks like, and, and, and then allow somebody to take over all that aspects or some part of life or let the world at this moment take that over you. Because whatever is going to happen this week, especially as we come into Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, this whole week, it's going to be the biggest show we are going to start to see fireworks for. And I don't know if the fireworks are that great when they start exploding kind of cl too close to your face, right? Because they're going to pop out of nowhere. Your Mercury retrograde is about to get ready for its opposition. It stopped here on Wednesday night as I'm filming this on High Vibe. But I just want to say that this whole week, Mercury starts to get, get its speed in retrograde and, and, and triggers a Uranus retrograde. It also covers the exact zone that Venus retrograded in Scorpio from October and November of 2018, dealing with relationship issues. Whatever, maybe you didn't even have a relationship, but maybe you were still battling the whatever had happened in the past, or you tried to fix it, or you tried to do whatever, and you, you, you know, it was a little red riding hood situation again with the wolf. Or, I don't know, I'm trying to like be really clever and think of old stories like Peter and the wolf too. The wolf's coming up a lot. Maybe this is where we're all howling towards the moon, even though it's going to be dark. We won't see it. And, and that's what's hard, too, with Venus being so aspected by a Mars retrograde in Quincunx, by an opposition to Neptune. So Venus at fall is making a horrible aspect to Neptune because of the fact that Neptune's in its home sign of Pisces. So Pisces is trying to say, like, your reality sucks, I know. It's bland, it's boring, it's monotonous, and it just is like, in your relationship situation, they're not going the way you want to. We need to find the escape. We need to find the dream. But Venus is like, I don't know if I want to do that too much. I have my life the way that I think it's good, even though it's shit. And so, you know, it's like, there's got to be a balance, though, so you got to add a little bit of color to the black and white picture, you know what I mean? And so the only way through this is that's what I'm saying is sometimes we just know our lives have to go, you know what? Maybe we just need to bring it down to just like simple levels. Things that just bring us peace and harmony to get through the roughest new moon of our lives. I made a post on Instagram, I think it was yesterday, uh, when Mercury went retrograde on Tuesday. And I said that, and I've done it, if you watch Battle of the Gods, which is available still on HighVibe.tv, if you want to, we're still on this Mars retrograde for another month, so... Um, and I talked about this is going to be the new moon that's the biggest trigger of the battle of the gods. But I will say that to get through this, and when I did the research, there has been no Mars retrograde square Saturn, Jupiter, Pluto in Capricorn, in Mars in its home sign, in over 2,000 years. That Paul the Apostle in 5 AD, huh? He didn't even go through this. I just say that because that's just like a weird marker in history. But so like you're going through a week that nobody has gone through in human history in over 2,000 years. Because once you start going into BC, I'll be honest, even like chart programs, like finally it's like awesome. Astro Gold's been doing great stuff and they just added some BC charts. But I just want to say that when you start going to BCE, when you start going really far back in the astrology, you're not even on the same calendar system anymore. You're going to see degrees that make no, you know, unless you're an astrologer and you get it and you know the difference in calendar systems, which I recommend people understand calendar systems. The calendar system you are on, and this has to deal with time too, because we're in Saturn Pluto and this harmony is against time. So if you feel like I have to get this done by right now, I have to do this, you're just going to feel frazzled. Mars retrograde in Aries is in the middle of all this too. It's going to feel like I mean, that's, that's the warrior that is wounded. Chiron is in Aries. And, and it's going to feel like, oh my God. Like, are we really forcing ourselves to do things we really want to do, but the universe is giving us lots of signs that say no? And then the universe is also giving us hell yes signs to get to the buried treasure. And are you choosing the signs that say hell no and still walking towards those? 
That actually, if I were to just be very honest and frank, that is the key to this week. Where is the signs that say stop and you're trying to still go? And then there's new signs that are saying, no, go this way. It's probably going to be not what other people might want to feel or hear or see that you go that way. But God and the universe and your guides and the angels and the architects and all of the ethereal beings are all telling you, go this way, please. And you're like, no, I can't. So not only are you saying, no, you can't to yourself of what you really want. Here's, here's all the angels like with the gates here. This is what you want. Come over here. It's like to a little, you know, I have a little nephew who's three or four, or four months. He can't walk yet, of course. But one day I know I'm going to be like, come on, Nathan, you can walk over to me. But you're like, no. So you're saying no to yourself. You're saying no to God. You're saying no to the universe and all your guides. And you're saying yes to the stop sign? And you're saying yes to the shitty way that this keeps being shitty? Really? I will say, and I just am going to put that out there because I'm deep astrology and I'm, I'm, just, I'm just the astrologer is going to give it to you raw and deep. Some people can't handle it. Some people can't. But this is a dangerous week. So don't go do dangerous stuff. Don't do something that you know already. It's just like going to take you to the edge of a bad cliff. And you're already at the edge of the bad cliff. And you're going to just be like, well, this might be more fun. Or I'm in power and control of the universe. Oh, so you're Zeus now? So you got to remember that Zeus, Jupiter, and Mars, the god of war, are squaring. You believe that, you, that, that the god of war that you are can overpower Zeus, or you think that you have more power than God? That, uh, you know what? I have power of my reality. I have power over my timeline. I know it's a sweet fairy tale. I know it's, I know my grand, one of my grandmothers, uh, my Nana, every night would read me, whenever I stayed with her, um, would read me beautiful, you know, Bible stories and def different stories and, and, and fairy tales, and I'd fall right asleep. And, and I'm going to tell the spiritual community right now that <laughs> these fairy tales are, are, are what get us to keep going. But the idea of you having this ultimate control is a joke. Because the one thing that hermetic alchemy teaches, and especially with this Mercury retrograde, which is hermetic because it's Mercury, and Mercury is the ruler of the messenger, but it also is the ruler of neutrality and also the only way, the only way to understand the ethereal. Because that's the truth. You have to come from a place where you have to understand in your mind from both sides of reality, the dark and the light. You have to understand how the universe works and you have to see how, if you look at all the old alchemy drawings, like in the 1600s, in the 17th century, some of, some of them are 16th century, 1500s, you're always going to see God, Yeshua, as a heart. You're always going to see a chain. And that chain is going to always come down to a virgin, feminine, Mary-looking Virgo woman who is chained to that in reality, but then on her left hand or arm, you'll see another chain down to a monkey. And that monkey is holding a globe with the architects, you know, it's what masons use, and think that they understand reality by looking, it's like monkey brains. And I don't want to get all Indiana Jones on you all and start yelling, Dr. Jones, Dr. Jones, and start having that there's people out there trying to eat your brain. Making you think that you have control. And making you think that they know how the world works and that th this is how it works. This is the ultimate red pill week of your life. Of your life. 
I can't say, I, I know that people think I'm overdramatic and I will admit I am a double Leo and I am a Leo Venus and a Leo Mercury. And I know I got that Leo rising and Leo sun, so and I know I'm in the 12th house, so people already think I'm crazy. But I will tell you, it is the ultimate red pill. And I know that it feels like, what? But it is. And for those that know, no. The only reason why Morpheus found Neo is because Neo was pretty much alone sitting there doing the research on his own, figuring it out, using his hermetic self to understand that something felt off about the reality and that he didn't have control. And so the only way to get through this is going to be the rite of passage for those that surrender to fate, those that surrender to true time, which would be ethereal time, which would be divine time, and not trying to force yourself down stop signs, because this sun square Saturn is rough, with a moon that will be in Scorpio, as that's building, over Mercury retrograde, opposing Uranus. The good news is Venus, even though it's going to be very stressed this week, it does make some, start to make some trines to Pluto. So we're having to get our reality understood. We got to add some magic. We got to add some listening to the outpost, Neptune to, remember, Neptune's the farthest planet out. Of course, we got Pluto, but I'm just saying that of a more spiritual conscious seeing and understanding, even though it could look like a delusion or even an illusion. But it's the outpost. It's, the, it's, a, it's a sensory radar system in the, in, the, in the universe that gives us as humans something weird's coming in. So, what's weird? What is, where, where are you going to like have that ultimate radar about what is going to get you to bury treasure in a better life? that is also the same map, treasure map, to your divinity. That if we even think of this whole concept of, oh my gosh, I have control, then how come you don't know how to get to the full map? Why would there be a map? Like, why do we map the stars? Why... Are the, why is the only constant in this whole world that we live in the planets? Why is it that only the planets and the rotations of the planets are exact to where I know a thousand years from now where they'll be? I'll know 200 years ago where they were. I know tomorrow where they'll be. I know where they, we all as people know that. That's the only constant. Everything else is just variables, possibilities, who knows? No, 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 no real, yes, secure, it dies and it gets reborn. And this is your rebirth into whether or not the rite of passage for you is that you are willing to, I don't think it's a coincidence that there's also a Supreme Court judge that's trying to, to go through its process. As we're in Libra season, dealing with judges, but it's squaring Saturn Pluto. And this new moon lasts for a month, and in this month, it's about relationships. The relationship you have with divinity, the relationship you have with time. Are you even aware of calendar systems? Are you, I mean, I, I know I'm starting there, because it's like, I know everybody wants to hear about where it's going to happen with love, but in relationship-wise. But it's like, you need to understand what the revealing of Jupiter, Pluto, and Saturn is in Capricorn. A reality, a time system that controls all of this and hidden powers that control everything. And to wake up and you have to be your own judge and you have to use your mind and you have to get to the buried treasure yourself with Mercury retrograde in the opposition to Uranus is it's going to be shocking ways shocking people, shocking situations that are going to go, here's the green light to your path, sir. We are having angels usher us into beautiful places, but they are ushering you out of where you keep going into the stop signs, which is the devil.
which is Saturn, which is, a, which is a dark path. And you know it is. And darkness doesn't have to look like what we think of as the devil itself or some sort of horror movie like we're going to see probably on every channel for the next couple of weeks because Halloween's coming up with a full moon, by the way, that's going to be based upon the energies of two weeks from now of this crazy new moon. So if you think that full moon's going to be, oh, what a fun Halloween. <laughs> yeah. We might actually really be scared if we didn't follow the usher that has the flashlight to the light this week that's going to require a shocking revelation in yourself to go inside and go, this is where the buried treasure is, and you cannot worry about what anybody in your personal life and in your environment thinks. And this is why with the sun trining the north node and this new moon even trining the north node in Gemini is the only way is through hermeticism. So I would go study hermeticism. I would go look at hermetic alchemy pictures. Because if you don't understand how to get to the ethereal and see the reality for what it truly is, that's the hard, that's the hard truth. And that you won't find peace because the only peace there is is to find the peace and serenity as what is. Not a destination, because that's why it's a fall position. We take action in Aries. It's inaction that takes the action that puts us to our fall in Libra. By the people that we choose, and by us not being aligned with the universe, and out of balance, and out of sync with divinity, and with understanding true time, and without even understanding the universe from a hermetic point of view. Which is pretty much what every single religion used is the understanding and all the ancients used this is a hermetic point of view and understanding but they have all the knowledge and they didn't they gave you jupiter instead they gave you jupiter they gave you idols they gave you characters they gave you people they give you celebrities they give you all these things to distract you from the truth can you wake up from that this week can you wake up that actually that you might be Connected to relationships and people that are not part of your path. And it might be hard. It might be very hard. Because if people don't step up the same way that you step up, then it's not together. It's not going to work out. This is a hard one. There's a door with Venus and Jupiter trying. But that doorway is only because it's the benefics and fall position in trine. So at least we get some benefic energy this week. And it's a new moon in Libra while this is all going on. So guess what? <laughs> Your only doorway to the, to the path of benefic is, you know, you're going to have to take ultimate risk, hard decisions, and be a reality ball buster to feel better about what's true for your reality and with the ultimate risk, and that you have no more time left to wait with indecision and you have no more time left to just keep sitting around and not accessing and I'm just going to open up the last can of worms of truth you think that the financial element of the world right now is just fine have you woke up to that whole element of it yet with a mercury and scorpio retrograde opposing a uranus and taurus venus making horrible aspects your financial life is dependent upon the relationships that you're in and the risks that you take. And also understanding the universe and understanding how it all works. I recommend going on YouTube and watching some podcasts of people who follow what's going on with money, who understand what's going on in world banking right now. There's so much of that stuff going on behind all of our noses at the moment. Wake up. Don't be tripping out when the end of this week comes as we, we come into, you know, Scorpio season next week. And that's where it gets dark. This is a Mercury retrograde and a Mars retrograde, both in the signs that rule Martian energy. And we are, the Earth right now is the closest to Mars. We're closer to Mars then we're closer to any other planet. 
We're right there. We're looking at Mars at night. And Eris is right there. If you look at just astronomically. And this is chaos. And, and the only way that the chaos can get rid of it is if you're in your truth, in your divinity. Because chaos shows up to try and bring truth. And this week, it's showing up in the most extreme ways. And so this is like... If you're going to still fall for, and I'm, this is my last thing, if you're just going to fall for this false world that is telling you how it's going to be, because that's, the only control you have is whether or not you're going to follow the higher ethereal truth or buy the biggest projection of bullshit of odds that you've ever been given and is that what you're going to, is that the timeline you're choosing? Because that's the only control we have is actually, usually it's just one or two options, especially with South Node and Sag, and we got a moon in Sag this week that's going to square Neptune and square Venus. Like, I, I'm trying to wake you all up that you just can't have hope only you have to be your own fact checker. You have to be your own understander of the universe. And you better, in yourself, go find the buried treasure yourself. Can't go hire somebody to do that. Can't go just sit and wait. And you can't be afraid when the universe shows up with green lights and beautiful lights of doorways to open in your life to pull you out of this darkness that is facading as light as well to bring you to true harmony, you can't fall and act like the victim and be like, well, I don't know, I, I just kept falling for it. Like, you've gotten so many downloads. Spirit is here to hold you and to, to, to make it the best life of your life. But you've got to wake up now. There's no more non-wake up left. There's no more. Because after this, we're going into edgy territory. Jupiter's about to come into 20 degrees. We're about to have Jupiter, Saturn, and Pluto, right? Like, Jupiter and Pluto are on their way to meet up again for the third and last time. Jupiter and Saturn meet up December 21st. And already in the Helio, Jupiter and Saturn are met up. And the Earth and Eris meet up. And Mercury and Neptune meet up this week in that system. And I'm telling you, Bliss is going to be found by doing pretty much everything that you think, especially if you're not really a fence jumper in the universe and you don't, you know, you play by the false reality, like <laughs> the cosmic spell or the cosmic wonder is your choice this week. And you can't turn something that is not magnificent into magnificent. You cannot, with alchemy, turn in something that does not hold already the hermetic principles and already the ethereal truth into gold. So, my heart comes out to all of you as this is hard on every single person. This is big choices on how we're going to lead our world and not fall for BS. And remember that with Uranus and Taurus, it is about liberty. It is about freedom. And anything and any property and any person or any communication that's trying to tell you that your life needs to be lived in a position that does not promote freedom is evil. That's, that's the astrology. And if you're so caught up because you're so worried about what your friends will think about that, that there's a narrative going around the world that really is true. And if you don't want to listen to astrology and you don't want to look at these charts with me and you, you want to leave me and you want to unfollow me because of that truth, because you think I'm crazy, go right ahead. But you know it's true. You're just too afraid to be real and own it. And that's the truth. So, we're going to wrap up these charts pretty quick here. 
because I just gave you all, all a lot. I'm on 42 minutes. Well, let's look at that Earth, Mars. <laughs> right in your face. We're in a Mercury retrograde, right? So look at that Mercury. Ready to also pass Earth. Not going to happen this week, but pretty nar nar. Now, if we look out this way, we should see Eris. I haven't looked and seen if they added Eris. Oh, yeah, there it is. Look at that. Oh, see that right there? You can see the asteroid belt. There's Eris. So, if you know, it's like we're coming into that. Because remember, as Earth moves, right, so does Mars. Like, we're seeing that connect Eris exactly from the sun's point of view. And it's getting Narnar, right, as we're going to have this new moon right here. And this new moon is opposite Mars, right? But from a sun point of view, right, it's like there's the moon, there's Earth, there's Mars. And then what? There's Eris back there. There's Jupiter and Saturn as Jupiter's about to conjunct Saturn finally in Helio. They're moving away from Pluto. But from Earth's point of view, it's a different story. That's it from Earth's point of view, right? Jupiter's still back. Pluto's still in front of Jupiter, and Saturn's ahead in the front. This is what astrology is, folks. Earth's point of view. Sun's point of view. Sun's point of view. Earth's point of view. I'm trying to give it to you this way. like Earth's point of view of Saturn, Pluto, Jupiter. Earth's point of view from the sun. Oh, it looks like the sun's back there. No, we're, we're in between that Virgo and to Libra, which if you see Libra is on the ecliptic right there, and then you've got some beautiful energy. Look at, there's Voyager 1 up there. Voyager 1 is what we sent out with a gold record and all the voices of the world that went past the heliopause into the heliosphere and outside into interstellar space. How funny. But actually, it's really more towards that galactic center line. As you can see, that's the pink line. And so they've been aiming that thing, and they had to use all the planets when they were in the right position in the 70s in order to get there. And this week, Mercury, from Sun's point of view, is going to be with Neptune. Look at that. Bing. So see, there's Mercury. Bing, bang. Oh, wait, let's just do this. Oh, is that all happening during this new moon? Um, yes, and right after. So, hmm. this is a spell or waking up out of the spell. And the problem is that the earth and everybody is so thinking that their side is right and that the other side is spelled. The, the, the only thing that you can really do is be like, what's offering individual freedom? It's Uranus and Taurus. The last time that Uranus was here, people took away people's freedoms. I mean, it was America that went and fought for those freedoms, right? And kind of saved everybody. So, if you want to get some of the real stuff, if America doesn't choose his freedom, is somebody going to go try and say, and you do the same tactic that we've used for how many years? How many decades? Maybe even how many centuries? And go, we need to liberate and free those Americans and take over that America. That's my biggest fear, looking ahead at Saturn square Jupiter and Pluto and, uh, or, or, well, first of all, it's the, give me Uranus square Jupiter Saturn, sorry. That's a mind bender. So, the shocking stuff to kind of end this visual look is Mercury and Uranus are going to be in opposition, right? From an Earth's point of view. So, we got to go to Earth's point of view and look at Mercury 
and we have to look at it from this way because technically we are not seeing it the other way and see that look at that Mercury Uranus and look at Mars really close it's not going to be there though but still we already saw the Mercury oppose Mars so there's going to be shocks and revelations and and Earth is actually aligning and getting ready to align with Uranus when we're in Scorpio season. So these are big moments for us to make sure that we are preparing ourselves for either the liftoff to freedom, which is... You have to remember the Greek story. If you don't understand that Uranus got screwed over by Saturn, his own son, Kronos, got his whole entire position taken away as, as, as the understanding of, some people say he's the you know, god of the skies or the god of the universe, understanding that he, control, he understood the universe, right? But it's the understanding closest to source. Got taken away and then Kronos took over the reality. And then of course he had his son Jupiter, which Jupiter is the one that said no, that's not gonna happen no more and basically reset the universe, and that's why Zeus became Zeus, but then Zeus also abused his power too, because his, his, uh, his daddy definitely had the genes of that. And Uranus has a rebellious side, but you know, there's something to say about Uranus that the grandfather kind of doesn't go as far as the son or the grandchild sometimes. <sighs> Let's look at the charts. So if you want to watch these charts, I'm going through some crazy stuff. Make sure that you're a member of HiveVibe.tv. Let's do this right now. So, we are here on Wednesday, the 14th of October. And this is a lot of astrology, folks. Here's the sun as we're doing this on Wednesday, starting to square Pluto. Owie mama, I was born with this transit. I can tell you, you have to face your fears. And when it's time for change, you just have to do it. But... Um, it's not easy because it requires a lot. It requires you to get to the most, sometimes I would say, especially in Capricorn, like it's a frustrating place. It's the goop, it's the intensity, but it's the intensity and we all desire intensity. So believe it or not, Sun Square Pluto people like me, right? Like we thrive off intensity. We thrive off pressure. That's how we survive. Because if you really think about it, the more comfortable you get in life, the less edge you get. The edgiest people in the world are survivors, are people that thrive in life because they, uh, it, it, there's, a, there's an element of wanting to survive or wanting to have desire and wanting to have more. So this is going to show you who's really not that passionate in life and who is. This is a very clear indication coming into this new moon. Oh, this person's not passionate at all. They don't even want to be here. They don't even want to be in my life. They don't want to do shit. They don't like me. Da, da, da. I've had that radar my whole life. It's very easy for me to see when somebody's like, you don't fucking do it. You're not into shit. You're fucking not that passionate. Get the fuck out of here. You know what I mean? But then everybody thinks I'm too passionate. So it's like, okay. So I got a small amount of people to fit in my life because, you know, oh, I want more calmness. You're, you're fucking too intense. And it's not like I'm some crazy motherfucker. I'm not even Tom Cruise jumping on the couch. You know what I mean? For Katie Holmes. And I'll be honest, Katie Holmes wasn't hot enough for me to jump on the couch for. <laughs> All I'm trying to say is, do you got passion? Do you got will? Do you got that energy and strength? Remember, the sun's been op opposing Mars retrograde in, in Aries. So Mars square Pluto... Look at that T-square. Boom. And you can see it in the chart. We'll put it in red too, just to like, let's do the same red, right? Boom. This is pressure. And this new moon is pressure. Look at Mercury retrograde at 11 degrees. Oh, that's opposing Uranus at nine. Look at Black Moon Lilith has gone back to zero of Taurus. On its way back, retrograde into Aries. So we want a better life, but oh, we have to actually like re-identify. And we are doing some buried treasure work. Woo! And that's what Scorpio is. It's the pirates. So I'll be honest with you. You know, and this will trigger people. I'm, not, I'm in a trigger mood tonight. 
I know some of you all love that, and some people don't. People who are passionate or have energy like a pirate, and I'm not saying a negative pirate, you know why? Because why is it that everybody loves Pirates of the Caribbean, the movie, and all that stuff so much? They love Jack Sparrow, because he's passionate. And he might be a little messed up, and he might be a little not perfect. But there's something of an Iranian and a Pluto nature to him. And, 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 and this is the way you get through your life right now. The more Jack Sparrow that you are, the more Nirvana, the more Kurt Cobain you are, the more that you're able to do that, but still stay maintaining the limits of understanding that we have rules and laws in life. So it's not about being a pirate that steals and cheats and is a bad person, but it has conduct of character that is expressive and powerful. And, 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 and anybody who does not have that, this is not the path for you in your life. You have to choose a different path because if you don't live that and breathe that, what is the purpose to be here? That is what Saturn and Pluto are asking. They literally come around and they ask everybody in the collective, are you passionate with purpose? Or are you blind and you don't know your purpose and you don't want to do anything here and you just kind of want to float through? Because... It's easy when Neptune's in Pisces, like it was in 1848 through 1861 especially, right? Guess what? People were drinking apple cider beer in the morning, noon, and at night. They were drunk. They didn't want to do much. Prohibition actually was going to almost go to whether you want to call that Congress then, it was, there, was, there was a whole movement for it, but the, the Civil War came and they said, well, we're not getting rid of alcohol. Are you crazy? The only way we're going to get these guys to fight is if they have alcohol to numb the pain. Where are you numbing yourself and not allowing yourself to live, breathe, and be your most powerful self? Because when we come into Thursday here, we're still sun square Pluto. So, so really Thursday is with a dark moon. See that moon right there at eight degrees of Libra? It's dark. It's a balsamic phase. It's closing out. It's so, it's not easy to see that moon. It's dark. You can only see it right before sunset. Sorry, sunrise, sunrise. So it's like, this is hard because emotionally we want this beautiful thing, but it's hard to emotionally get. Because you got to close out. What do you got to close out? The life that's not passionate. And you got to face your truth. What do you not like and what do you love? And what are you down for? Because you know what? Pluto, you know why I like Pluto? Pluto is like, I am all the way down. Or I am all the way not. There's no in between. No in between. This also rules investments. This also rules like, so you got to look at monetary aspects. Like I've been saying and money, and where you're at with your investments, and where you're at with life, and where you're at with you know, financial and receiving ends. This is also desires. And Libra, sun and moon, want that beautiful sunset. They want that partnership that works. Or if you're in a partnership, you want to figure out how you're going to realign this thing. And, and I mean, that's going to be, that's going to be difficult. I'm not going to lie, but it, it's possible. The sun just finished its great trying to the north and south node and the, and the new moon at least is in alignment with these, not exact, but these are what serve to the pleasure of the sun and the moon. So uh, this is with Pluto in square to the sun moon, even though it's Thursday, a dark moon, so it'll be the sun. It'll be whether or not you have a stimulating and passionate life and you figure out how to make it that way or you communicate or are you just avoiding it and you're just waiting and you're going to just keep doing the whole bully. I'm going to, when I believe it'll happen or I'm going to keep waiting and I'm going to keep, you know what? Keeping anything on the side as backup is not sun square Pluto. So if you're keeping a person on the side, but you don't want because you don't want to deal with it, <sighs> you'll get smacked in the head for that shit. Hard. Hard. 
Just deal with it. This, son, this is a week where you just have to deal with everything that you are not wanting in your life and everything that you do want. Because it's almost like in order to get what you want, because Saturn's here, let's remind ourselves that this is a week of sun square Saturn with Saturn in its home sign, Capricorn, home. And the sun at its fall position. Fall, why do you think we call it the fall? <laughs> when the sun comes in the Libra. If you cannot deal with the shit you don't want, then you can never receive the shit you do want. Pretty simple. Mercury is there in Scorpio helping out in retrograde being like, yeah, I don't really like this as I'm looking back into myself and my real truth and my, my desires and my sexual nature and my rawness and the sun squaring Pluto. Penetration. Not, don't, don't get your head there in a different place. Penetration into your truth. You got to penetrate into it now. But also this is denial at its highest. Because it's like, oh, I've already committed to something I don't want to do, so I, I'm just going to go through it anyway. No! I went through that burden many years in my life as a Sun Square Pluto person. And let me tell you, as I'm also one of the rarest people alive, and I don't want, that's not an ego thing, I'm giving you math. I have lived through progressed Pluto from 29 Libra into Scorpio. I was born within the month that Pluto went into Scorpio in 84. That was done with Libra. That was August, I think, 20... Well, it, it happened to me this year, so I'm 30, I was 35, so it happened 35 days after my birthday, and you know what's even crazy about that? I'm born July 23rd, my mom's August 28th. So August 28th of 1984, my mom wasn't born in 1984. She was actually born in 94. She's so beautiful, right? Like, you know, I don't know if people get the joke, but um, that's the crazy part is on my mom's birthday, after she had me, 35 days after, Pluto went to Scorpio. I've lived through that feeling physically, soul wise. And I have a son at zero Leo. So, Progress Pluto is at zero right now in my chart. Scorpio, in its home sign, squaring the sun at zero Leo. That never happened in reality. But it progressed to happen for me. And so I have the two dignified energies of the sun and Pluto in square. And I can tell you, as any other person born in Ju on July 23rd, 1984, would be the only person that could have that. I can tell you, why do you guys think I can go <laughs> so easy? People go, how the fuck do you figure that shit out so quick? I'm like, I don't even use it in my head. But you know what it is? It's because I penetrate and I don't deny the truth. I see it and I fucking accept it. That's the only way. And there's no way I'm going to do anything that anybody tells me that I don't want to do. No, and that's Mercury pose Uranus too. There's like a little bit of a F you. I'm not going to do that. I know that doesn't. But everybody in their life lives in their life where they keep holding on to baggage that they don't want to hold on to. Trust me, I do it for a minute, and then there's always the blowout. Like I don't want this in my life, and I. I'll, why do you think I'm an otter? Because I will throw my fucking phone. You know what I mean? Like I, I just did. I don't care. I will throw everything. You know what I mean? Like whatever. Because I'm willing to realize I'm about to let this go. I got to get it. And that's the only way I'll get something good. So I'm trying to teach you all as a teacher today. <laughs> this new moon is about removal. Remove. Not just chilling out and going through another day, another week. Because if you're a chill out right now moment, that means that there is something that is creepy that is trying to wake you up in ways that you keep pushing down. I don't want to fucking deal with the, you know? 
That means that you are not in your passion. You are not in your fire. You are not in your true harmony. You have issues that you're still holding on to and it's Capricorn stuff. It means that you haven't grown up. You don't know how to be a grown up yet. You don't know how to be a boss in yourself. And you don't know how to be a CEO for yourself. Not, I don't care if you own a business or not. I don't give a fuck about that shit. All I care about is you being the CEO of your life. That you're the chief executive officer of your passion, of yourself, and of the destiny that you want within, and that you don't accept shit that you don't want to do. You have to also know, if you want to get something in life, there are some things that you might have to do to do those, right? But not the... It's not about taking, if somebody offers me lamb chops, I'm going to say, get that shit out of my face. I don't care how much fucking mint jelly you've got. I ain't going to keep rubbing more mint jelly on that shit. That's too gamey for me. Lamb? I got Jupiter and Capricorn. You think I'm going to eat my Jupiter? You're crazy. That was an astrology joke. So let's go to that new moon, because that's the big one everybody wants to know about. Friday, October 16th, 2020. Oh boy. It's, it's definitely the new moon of our lives. Is it, is it working still or no? Okay. So, 23 degrees. Ah. You know, I recommend everybody also watch the movie 23 that has Jim Carrey in it. There's something about 23 it equals five. Hermeticism, but this 23 degree new moon in Libra is exactly opposed to Eris, the 2400, within seven minutes. That's nothing. So, chaos. Number one, it's opposed Mars retrograde in Aries. Um, this is a clash. The sun and Mars are clashing? The moon's not that happy either because it's squaring Saturn. If you're born with moon square Saturn in your chart, you've gone through, you understand, you've gone through really hard emotional losses in life and frustrations and really difficult situations emotionally. And this is exactly square Pluto. So let's, let's add that. And we're going to take a little bit of time on this because the other charts, I'll go, you know, this is also square Jupiter, so we'll erase it again. They're all within the range. So that's what's creating that major T-square. What else do we have? Venus at 16, opposing Neptune. So there's Venus in its fall. Not happy here, right? Because why, why would a feminine energy want to be in Virgo? Sure, it, 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 it it, it, you know why? And I'm going to just, this has nothing to do with Virgos or anything, but we're just going to take the understanding, okay? Because when you look at Botticelli and you look at the birth of Venus, it's in a clam and she's beautiful and she's surrounded by angels, right? Actually, let me just give me a second here. Um... All right. Oh, you know what I can do here, which is cool? I bet you'll let me do it. Um, uh, uh, it's, called, it's called art. There we go. Did Google still have its Google art and culture? Yeah, here, here we go. Boom. So, why is Venus exalted in Pisces and at fall in Virgo? Because we need to pay attention to Venus because it's a Libra new moon. Libra is ruled by Venus. So let's take a look at her. Why does she love Pisces? And look at how detailed we can get into this. It's insane when you're on Google Art and Culture. Because look at, there's, there's the Divine Masculine and Feminine together. That is Twin Flame Energy. Look at the, the robe of being 
oh, hold on, I've got you. But there's a beauty to her. There's a there's a there's a there's an elegant bliss. There's the there's the understanding as well. Oh man, I don't know why it. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> A little too close. I, I can't even believe they're, they're, they're not letting me um, and go back. Um, okay. So that clam, it's from the ocean. You can get into Darwinism with that and like Darwinian theory. You can get into that the ocean holds a magical space and vibe. You can get into the protection element. But there's something... Because Jupiter was the original ruler of Pisces before Neptune was found. They have to realize that, you know, there was like the godly energies. But you have to remember that with Mercury, Mercury's mom got raped. So Mercury's the son, uh, uh, you know, of a, ra of a mother that got raped. So Venus in Virgo and we can take it off for a sec. I'll look for this up. So we'll just like, I just want to get, we'll just do for some Virgo art here, or some old Virgo art. Okay. Because I love Virgo energy, trust me. And I think it's very beautiful, but there's a difference. And I really want to be able to show that to people. Cause now with, you know, today's modern world, people are over glorifying stuff. Right? But Virgo is very plain and, and, and simple in a sense because it's, it's the opposite of the waters and the clam. It's on the physical earth plane and it, and it is the divine mother that harvests and gives us goodness. But it, 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 you have to realize though, it's not given much. It's a virgin. I'm going to have to do ancient because all these people are creating just too much art that just, oh, there we go. Art to print vintage. Okay. So. My trigger people. And I'll go through all, if you go into my school, I teach it, all this stuff. Uh, especially the fall positions and so forth. Man, it's like everybody's over glorifying all this stuff so much. Venus is exalted in Pisces, so she can be over glorified. Hmm, here we go. Let's take this Augustus, and it's not the Virgin for a second. When you're out in the fields and you're picking wheat, you're sweating. Nobody's there to give you a Biori pad, a shower, or it, it's, I can't even say the word because of today's culture and, and cancel culture, but it's the humbleness of having to do work that nobody wants to do. And why is Mercury the ruler of Virgo then? Well, because nobody wants to do the work of understanding the real truth of the universe. There's no shower with it. What you realize is that you've been duped and that you've been put to this planet to do things that are benefiting other people, not yourself. And Venus and Virgo has a very tough time here because she is the farthest away from the sea, the divine, masculine and feminine, the beauty, the magic, the protection. She's out alone in the field. Her hands are bloody. She's out there sacrificing for no return except for, and the, there's a purity like that, that God does see, right? So it's not like both of them have a godly energy. I don't want to say that there's no godly energy with Venus and Virgo because there is, but it's like, there's got to be some sort of magic here, right? Because it's like, this is not the place you want to be. Venus doesn't want to be here. Like no, nobody wants to be here. You could, it's fine to be humble in life and that's a great thing. 
but we don't need to prove ourselves 24 7 that we're humble all day does that make sense like god didn't want you to come down here i, I i'm gonna be honest this is, a, this is an opinion but i don't think that god i think god gets annoyed for the people that probably go down there on earth and just kind of just sit here and just go okay god i'm gonna be just the most humble thing and i'm not gonna do anything in my life except just be like you know i'll do any humble thing it's like come on i can't i gave you down there to be do something great you know too like I, you know like i want some humbleness but i want you to be great too like i want you to do something i want you to be something i just don't want you to just be sitting there and subserving me and kissing my feet all day and that's venus and virgo no, it's better if I do this because that's the best thing to do. Well, with the opposition to Neptune, are you going to miss out on the, the magic story? Are you going to miss out on magic? So this new moon's like, how much are you just, you know, sweating? And I got to think of a new word because there's five times I've almost said it and I can't say it in this world. Or else then I'd have to take the show off YouTube and just keep it on high vibe. And I, I'm sure that people don't want me to do that. But the word would be sweating and... Hmm. Just doing... Living your most just... Life and getting no return. Except for some extra points up in heaven later on. But they're not that many points because still the hermetic Mercury always figures out the reality to jump out of this place. Not staying, keep doing the same thing. Because if you're going to stop and you're going to do the same thing, it better be for something great. That's what Venus trying Jupiter is on this new moon. So we'll go to that now. I just had to kind of give you all this whole, like, this new moon's about whether or not the universe, and I said this in my predictions for three years, and everybody's kind of wondering, what did he mean by those corporate camps? I won't even use the word that I put in between there anymore. Are you not awake to where they want to put you? And that's, they want to put you out in the field. But it's not going to be a field where at least you're getting a suntan anymore. It's going to be a factory building an AI robot. Because you don't know how to, at this point, see where the universe is calling you to go and to remind you of your ethereal being and beauty and presence and that you're worth a lot more than that. And it's the choices that you're making right now. And if you're following... The bandwagon. Mercury, retrograde, oppose Uranus. You following the bandwagon? Because you want to try and fit in? Mercury, oppose Uranus is right now the people who are not trying to fit in are in the truth. The people who are trying to fit in are not in the truth. That's the truth. <sighs> And so this pressure with Jupiter, Pluto, Saturn, right? Like this is, this is pretty extreme. We'll, we'll use the highlighter now, right? Like it's pretty extreme. And that is also opposing Mars and Eris. So there's a chaos on, on where people have lost their definition and their power and their will of their ego. And we have lived through a 10-year moment here of get rid of your ego so we can define you for you. You will be THX1138, you know what I mean? You will be, you know, this. You will have to wear that. You will have to have this. You will have to do this. You will have to do this. Because that was the greatest ploy that the universe ever did, or I don't want to say the universe, that these forces of the dark did through the last 10 years of Uranus and Aries. was like, let's forget, let's make people forget they... Their ego is their identification of their soul and divine, divinity in themselves. And let's tell them to get rid of their ego and just surrender to 
nothing, no identity, that means that you won't, sur you won't surrender and identify to God, you won't identify to your family, you won't identify to anything except what is being told on the boob tube, Neptune, that's been there the last 10 years, like almost 10 years now, nine years. Let's, ident let's have you identify through that and the media and all those things and pfft, guess what? That's how you've been programmed now. And right now is the new moon that's trying to take away your ego forever if you don't grab, spit back, and re-identify. Like, no! Because now it's Jupiter and Mars in square. Okay? So we're going to add another line to this one because I'm showing you how many things are going on. Okay? Mars is at 2011 and Jupiter here is at 1911. So it's within one degree. But this is going to go on this whole week. Mars square Jupiter. And Jupiter's at its fall. Another falled planet in a hard aspect to a dignified planet where Neptune is dignified, right? So we'll use this again on the chart so you can see. Neptune is at home. Okay? But let's look at where we're at on this new moon. Negative nine points in Libra. The worst negative you can get, Jupiter, because it's in such hard aspects to all the aspects of Mars, Eris, and it's there with, with Pluto, negative nine. The moon, negative five. Mercury, because it's retrograde and Scorpio, and it's being a, Uranus is a, an opposition to it, negative five. Venus? Thank God Jupiter's trining it. It's zeroed out. The only two planets with any points are Mars and Saturn. The malefics. So, what is Mars and Saturn? Those that have identity that they choose win. When the sheep herder chooses you, what you do, you're out in the field. But let's erase fields. Let's start using factories. Let's start using... What if they're trying to turn your factory into you sitting at your house for the rest of your life? There's no... Here it is. There are no doors open anymore for those that are not willing to jump the fence anymore. Neo, in order to get to that matrix, had to take a red pill, but it was not just the red pill, it was everything before the red pill. He had to take the phone call from Morpheus at work and they were after him, and he had to run, and he had to go outside, and he had to go through all that. And then he had to go where they implanted him. Remember? The agents, they implanted him to follow him. Yeah, I know it's a crazy, you know, for those that haven't made the jump yet, this is why all of us in the spiritual community for over a decade have been saying, I don't know how people are going to get through 2020 in the wake up. Because it's it's good to wake up. It's another thing to actually go through the wake up all the way when you take the red pill and you have to go down the tube and you realize you wake up and there's, it might not be literal, but there's tubes and computers controlling how you live and how you see the reality and all this thing. It's creepy Pluto stuff. And that's what this new moon is. is it's Pluto that I'm looking at the most. And Saturn. But but mainly it's that Pluto, and we'll use, we'll use this blue here, okay? 22, squaring Sun and Moon that are at negative 9, negative 5, and squaring Mars, which is actually at a plus of, what was that, 5? Yeah, but, but so, you know, it's like when Pluto gets pressured like this, remember, Pluto's the smallest little outcast of all time who he does he does, Hades does whatever he wants but remember Pluto rules Hades Hades is the underworld and the only way that Hades gets out of the underworld or, or basically 
you have to you just have to know the story of that Isis and Osiris and and the understanding of Horus that comes up as the daylight, right? There's a transformational process of Pluto and Hades of the understanding that you must understand the underworld in the dark and understand the divine feminine nature and understand that the birthing of the son of God is Horus, which is the story that the Christians took, <laughs> literally. And so you have to know that on the horizon, Horus' zone, that the hour and understanding where you're at in the time system of the universe, not the calendar system, and that we are at a time where the only way through is to get through Hades, is to birth and understand the light in which that you are. And what is that sun doing? It's squaring Pluto. So Hades is squaring, or, or the, you know, let's say Horus, the sun, or let's say Jesus is squaring Saturn too, right? The devil and maybe, believe it or not, with Pluto, if you were ever to maybe go down into hell or if you were to go into Dante's Inferno, like if you were to go into all these weird places, I guarantee you there'd probably be a sidekick down there that you wouldn't want to meet. That's Pluto with Saturn. Saturn would be like Lucifer, like the, the, the a character, but you wouldn't know until you got in there probably that there was some other it's probably corn pop. <laughs> he can be with a bunch of bad boys, you know? So that's what I'm trying to say. It's corn pops involved, and you don't know that corn pops around, and he runs a bunch of bad boys, and this is pressure on corn pop and Satan. And they're cornered, and they are going to do, like any dark force is going to do, back in a corner, retaliate and bring out their teeth and bring out everything that's going to try and swallow you up and are you going to fall for it? Are you going to, are you going to also, because actually they, they do it like in different ways. They manipulate. They manipulate the story. They show a manipulation. And so we all are, we are all going to, it reminds me of going to Disneyland and watching fan, you know, Fan, I think they called it fanta. What was it? And it was fanta phantasmic. It reminds me of, or Fantasia in many ways. But there's still this phantasmic, where you know you see maleficent. You see the malefic energy that tries to take over and spell out Mickey and all the great things of all of Disneyland. Like it's kind of a dramatic show. I'm sure they got rid of it not just because Tom Sawyer's Island had to be redone for Star Wars. They got rid of it because they think they just didn't want to wake people up anymore of like, that's how reality works. Walt knew the whole time. The best seats in the house are at Club 33, <laughs> which is a Mason place at Disneyland. Not Disney World. I know you Disney World people like try to claim you love Disneyland so much, but come to the real Disneyland where Walt was, you know what I mean? Like, eh, that's where it really went down, the magic spells. So I'm just trying to tell you that this is a magic spell and there is a dark world that you are either going to get trapped in or you are breaking through because you're, it's about, it's not about fighting fire with fire. It's that people without passion, drive and energy and will to survive in life for the light and that are willing to be their most authentic self and take risks to jump the fences to the truth, to not get herded into sheep. That's, that's the way of the light. It's not just, I'm just going to allow the dark to take over. I'm just going to allow, I'm just going to follow what everybody else is doing. Okay, sheep. We all know it doesn't end up too well for sheep that end up there, unless you get babe. But even then, it's not fun to have a pig roll you around. And I want to remind you on one thing on this new moon, too. Since it is Libra season and since it is October and we're starting around the corners into the end of this year, this is probably the most intense we're going to see of the rest of this year as far as harder transits. And so it's a year of the rat in Chinese. It's a metal rat. And you have to be smart and you have to be willing to jump 
to the rescue of the bull the, and the ox, right? And, and actually like figure out a situation in a race where everything's going to beat you. Everything's going to trample on you. But you have to know how to see that God somehow in the blink of an eye for that rat went, oh, ox, can I ride with, let's me go with you. There's no other way for the rat to cross the river either. And actually the rat, you have to remember there was a cat that would try to do the race and the cat probably would have run. But the cat was such a sleepy tard, right? Cats sleep 18 hours a day, that the cat said, wake me up, rat, for the race of the morning. You know what the rat did? Didn't wake up the cat. Is that mean? Some people think it is. But I think that the truth in the matter is right now, if you are that asleep, nobody's coming to wake you up for the race. Nobody's coming to wake you up for the truth. Because you're just going to keep suppressing. And I know some people are like, I am awake, I am awake. Uh, we're all going to find out if we really are. Including myself. Not one person can say we're fully awake at this moment until we go through this. Rite of passage. Through Hades. It might feel really dark. And those who think that it looks really light are following the false light that's always been talked about. Because you see light on the other side of the dark. You don't, you can't see it any other way. But there's a, fa there's a projected light, a false light that's being pushed out. And I just want to say you got to wake up to it. And this is going to be about the people that you're connected to and use the sun square Pluto, use, use sun, squ sun square Saturn, sun square Pluto, sun square Saturn. Sun square Pluto people are all in and they're powerful and they're intense or they're not. And they destroy their lives constantly. And they're just like, they look like Pluto. They look like they're destroyed. Or they look like they're energized and powerful. Sun square Saturn. Workaholics. People that are willing to put in all the work in the world to get the things that they need to get over the hurdles in life that, you know what, you gotta bite your tongue sometimes and you gotta, you have that grit and you gotta just push through and you got to take those moments and you got to be better at planning. You need to understand timing better and you need to, you need to be willing to go through the hard stuff and you know how to succeed through it and push the light through it. If you're seeing people that just are right now in those moments just flailing, run away. Run away. Don't start sitting there and taking it and being like, get it over with already. Ah! Hurry up. No. Don't take it anymore. Hurry up. I'm stealing that from Pablo Francisco. Hurry up. You really going to just keep taking it? Hurry up. Get it over with. Hurry up. No. That's how you're going to know. The dark is in your life. Energy of people, it's very much about people. Venus, the ruler of Libra, is in Virgo. It's out in the fields. And it's got to take the magic. And it's got to listen to the magic. And it's got to remember that beautiful self and the divinity. And it's got to remember that it's got all this energy. And then it's sun, moon, in Libra, squaring Saturn and Pluto. Remember that the sun was with Saturn and Pluto on January 12th of 2020 during the conjunction. And with Mercury. And where's Mercury? It's retrograde opposing Uranus. People. Oh, the dark is speaking through people. The dark is speaking through people who don't have the grit, who don't have the passion, who are just flailing and are not willing to push through and are not wanting to show up and are not wanting to be all in and don't know how to figure it out. It's the year of the rat. If they can't, if, if you're around people who are just like, I'm just flailing and I don't really know and I'm just kind of like floating. Oh my God, run. Run! Run! Because it's almost like at any moment they're just going to go, they're just taking. They're taking from you. They're stealing your energy. I know as a manifesting generator, my aura, people just want to just take it. Right? Like it even says, Raw even says, manifesting generator, sleep alone. Because in your sleep, people will, like, they, they, they live next to you, they'll be like, 
look at this fool's got all this fucking energy. I'm just going to take some of that because I don't have it. This new moon's not pretty. But it is pretty for those that are willing to see the truth and see through and be willing to do the most ultimate, hardest things. If you are committed to something that you know you don't want to be committed to anymore, don't do it. If it looks like it's dark and it's not, it's just like, it's, it's flailing and you can't figure it out and they can't figure it out or any situation that just is no, it got a big no and the universe is showing you a yes in this direction, go in that yes. That's balance and harmony. So there is ushering. Hmm. And that last thing about this new moon is the north node, which at 21 degrees is trining the sun and the moon. And so again, it's all about Gemini. What energy is twin-like for real? Or is it the bad twin? That's the hard part about Gemini, right? Because it's two twins. Two Mercuries. But remember, Mercury can be benefic or it can be malefic. And there's that line in the middle which makes it neutral. And so, are you in a benefic connection with people that resonate with you and fully are in the same passion and the same energy? Or are you in a malefic where actually it's like you're taking on the shadow version of yourself through relationships that look similar to you, but really it's not the part that you want to play out. And that's Venus and Neptune. And Venus opposing Neptune is the great Oz. You know, it's like almost like is the person really just some little like weird troll person that's got a really good projector that makes them look like this all seeing powerful Oz and you bought it and the whole time like you could have just pushed that door open and said get here little troll. And then they tried to make him a nice man at the end. Oh really? Nice people do things like that. I don't know if you remember the image of Oz, but it was not a very pretty image. So, then there's the people who are going to buy going back into the dark like, well, I, I saw through the projector, I got the little troll out and you know what? He's nice or she's nice. But she was willing to lie to, or he was willing to lie so hardcore in a dark way to me and not let me have access and push me away and push me out and control me and do all these things. Let's just move to the end and real fast through this weekend. So Saturday Moon's going to be with Mercury retrograde and now it's going to start opposing Uranus. This is a trigger point Saturday after this new moon. The moon comes into Scorpio. Mercury's retrograde there and this is where, I, I, I'm just going to be honest, <laughs> the sun's starting to square Saturn. Oh, like, like this is where it's like now you start to reveal emotionally because you have to remember 30 days, 28 days from now Mercury will be direct. So the moon, next time it passes Mercury in, in Scorpio, it'll be direct. So this is your buried treasure moment. Like, you'll be like, oh my gosh, I have the map. I went through this new moon and I fucking didn't take on this shit. And I'm starting to go down and see the retrieval of the treasure. Or it'll be like, oh, I, I'm going down this road and oh, these steps. What, this is welcome to Hades? Welcome to hell? Welcome to Satan's world? Welcome to the, oh God. I went down the road. I'm going down in the wrong temple. I'm going down in the wrong place. I am not in my alignment. I am not there. It'll be a deep, hard map of understanding that you went down the road. You took the wrong map. No, that's not the bathroom map at Disneyland that shows you where everything is. That's the map that takes you to the underground place that you don't want to go, that you knew the whole time that you would get anyway. And now Mars squares Jupiter. Bad luck. Go look at ancient astrology books. Mars square and Jupiter is bad luck. Right? Oh, I, I think I can, I believe I can still make this work my way. I can believe the story I want to believe. 
So if you're not living in your truth and you're not willing to grow up and handle these, these situations where you just keep pushing them away, it's like, it's just going to, it's not going to just continue. It will just lock itself in into the story fully like a leech. So this is also a very leeching energy too, right? Remember the great big red, you know, just uh, storm that's on Jupiter. It looks like this big red, just like rah, sitting there. It looks, it's bigger than Earth, that storm. Uh, Mars square Jupiter to me is this whole issue and identification and like no that 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 that's not a storm that's a beautiful red dot on jupiter <laughs> no it's not like I, I i can go through there i don't know if you remember too in um there's a great movie which is called jupiter sending which actually was done by the people who do the matrix and, and guess where the dark put their ships to harvest all the humans in that great red spot on jupiter in the storm to hide their ships. So Mars square Jupiter is, are you bullshitting yourself so much? Mars and Aries is, is, is a warrior that is not going to go fight anymore. It's very Templar like, and somebody sent me a video that this summer that there was a big crop circle in France that was the Templar Knight insignia. I don't know if you know what that symbol is. That's the fleur, that's the fleur de lis, and this is also the Templar Knight symbol. And I can tell you, ironically, as you know, we have had October thirteenth, and there was something about just that day. It came up for me about Friday the thirteenth, and then we're in Friday the thirteenth because of Halloween talks and movies and all that shit. But you got to remember that that's what the Templar Knights went through. I am not going to fight for that belief system anymore. We have been your guards that get you to the Holy Land. And we found that other info. We found out who you guys really are. Oh, we'll come back here. We need to talk about it. Oh, we're going to kill you all. This is, some, this is some past life Templar Knight shit where it's like, you're not going to fight for the belief system anymore that's totally out to screw you. And you're not going to be dumb enough to continue to listen to it either and believe that they're good people. October the 18th, Sunday, Sun square Saturn, Venus opposed Neptune exactly. Moon and Venus sextile yachting to Mars retrograde. <sighs> Venus trying Jupiter. This is that Venus story of, uh, and this is going to bring Moon and Scorpio, Mercury retrograde that's already done. And now it's starting to really get close to the opposition to Uranus. Mars and Jupiter are exactly square on that Saturday night into Sunday. And the sun is squaring Saturn. You are at the last hard aspect to Saturn by the sun in Capricorn for more than over two decades. This is the last one. So this is one of the last curtain hard tests of your life because they will never be with Jupiter and Pluto ever again together. So are you going to pass the test? God always gives us, even if we are walking down the, the, the fucking worst place in hell. And we've realized that after this new moon, there is only one way out with sun score Saturn you're going to have to make the hardest choice of your life and just take the, okay, God, pull me, pull me out of here. And I am getting out of all of this shit that I don't want to be in. I am, I'm making the judgment call. I am also following judgment, which I know I even said I'm going to do a faster, deeper astrology. This shit's important. This is the biggest test of our lives this week.
if you understand the judgment card and you look at it, it's important to understand this card. It is a bunch of dead gold or gray cold carcasses in coffins that are raising up to a, a angel with a trumpet very similar to the Knights Templar logo, but we'll just keep it, you know what I mean? Um, that, are, that are to the real cross, because the real cross is the cross of the four cross like this, which is the seasons. That's the true alignment. That's even the original Jesus depiction of paganism, not the cross we see today, like this one, that people freak out on me and think I'm evil or something because they fucking have this cross and they'll see it, un they'll see it backwards or whatever, right? It's the, it's the, it's the cross. And, and it's the calling. It's also 10 and 10, 20. 2020 is judgment, judgment. Are you listening to the voice of the ethereal God and the highest Lord and the highest truth and ready to step into that calling? Or are you just a, a freaking CV looking gray, tired out, and just living in a coffin? Or are you willing to open that coffin up and are you willing to actually inhale the life and the breath of God? That's the test. Judgment times judgment. And it's not judgment like we see in like biblical depictions of God judging you and you're going to hell, but it's more like you put yourself into hell. God doesn't put you into hell. You fall for hell. God even gives you a last hand when you're down the steps all the way. You're at the door. The door's open. They're rushing you in there and God's all the way there and you either push yourself with Mars square Jupiter. You push yourself and you just say, I'm going to keep staying in this bullshit. I'm going to stay in this bullshit relationship that's not, it's pulling me from my truth. And you got to look at your whole being and go, is this really me right now? And you got to look around. Where is it that fucking, I'm not seeing it show up fully. I'm not seeing it fucking in my same vibe. Oh, you better run. And that running is running to God and running to spirit, running to the divine, seeing through the bullshit, seeing to the highest octave and having a calling and a purpose. I do this job even when I'm frustrated. I was just complaining even before I did the show. To both Craig and Ann, I was complaining about my life. I have nothing to complain about because the only thing I came down here to do is the judgment mission. And as long as I keep showing up for that, everything will be fine. And I have so much power and I have so much energy right now because I'm in that. The only way we get feeling energy, the only way we get healed, the only way that we get anything is through the divine power of God. And no, that's not because my Nana is Christian science. But maybe there's something to that. Maybe there is something to the fact that there is all the answers we ever need. There's all the healing that we ever need. There is all the answers. There is all the beauty. There is all the love. There is all everything through having not only just the belief in some higher force, but the connection to that higher force and doing a purpose and knowing the mission of what that higher force brought us down here to do. Without that understanding and without that willing to commit 100% into it, you stay gray. You stay in the coffin. You, you, you're still avoiding that one? You, you still stay in that crappy thing? The crappy person? That crappy relationship? You still stay in that crappy place of life? Energetically, overall, just whatever it might be? Or are you fired up? You hear the trumpet call. And you breathe it in. And right now they're trying to have you not breathe anything in. Have you ever thought that maybe it's because they don't want you to take in the judgment of the breath of God? And I'm not trying to sound like some Christian preacher, although I am like an astrologer with reverend ancestors. That's the test, October 18th. Because as we get to Monday, 
The sun's done. The sun is not going to see a hard aspect of Saturn. Okay, in Capricorn again. We're done with that. Fall to its dignity. And, and you know, that's another. We're having so many planets going through hard aspects from fall to a dignified, strongest home. The worst to the home. So it's like, do you want to be in the worst or do you want to go home? This is also the phone call from spirit of your higher self coming in. Watch, Mercury, nine degrees with Juno. Mercury retrograde with Juno at nine degrees of Scorpio, exactly opposed to Uranus at nine degrees on Monday. This thing just doesn't, it just keeps on hitting. Mars still squaring over to Jupiter at 19. And Jupiter getting ready to come to 20, right? It's getting ready, but it's not there yet. Venus, try Jupiter. There's a very positive aspect that we could feel like we actually reached the right place and it's all going to go to a much better position. And we are, we've woken up and we, we are going to see crazy bombshells with the moon and the south node uh, and Sag and, 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 and Mercury retrograde with Juno is definitely you starting to find treasure of the power of the essential, whatever it might be, whether it's a relationship or whether it's a, just, a, just a sense of self and connection to that, that judgment call of life to God that you will have a moment where you finally go, wow, I see the treasure on the map and I'm actually seeing it in the road in front of me and I'm actually seeing the better life. It, I, would, I would call this a day of heaven that, 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 that could really show up or this is your first day in hell. And October 20th of 2020, oh, that's going to be judgment, 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 by the way. Um, that's going to be Venus at 20. So it's done with that. It's now going to start squaring the nodes. So, and with the moon and the moon will be there. So we're going to have a big T, we're going to have a big grand, uh, mutable cross with Venus squaring the nodes and the moon. And those are benefics. And you are going to emotionally take on the better world that only will pass if you took that magic and you listen to that magic. And you brought that into your life and it's the magic of God and it's the magic of your judgment to a higher calling and that you follow that. Mars is still squaring Jupiter. Like, do not keep identifying off stories that are just, they don't make sense in your life. Like, they, they're, they're not going where you want to go. Don't push yourself into stories that, you know, like, we're having to go and go, I'm only going towards the stories that I want that are part of the mission, not the ones that I want only. And also, then not having an ego, right? To identify even what you believe in. Like, you know what I mean? That's an issue for some people. But th th this, is, this, is an, uh, this is where people start to start to see the crystallization of, a, of change in their life. Or, oh my gosh, it didn't change and I, I need to have it change and it's going to feel like crazy, crazy town. There's crazy town throughout this whole week, by the way. I'm going to show you these last two quick charts. I'm showing you, um, first, I'm going to show you October 16th when the, this new moon happens, the helio, which is blowing my mind, by the way. Mercury will be on Neptune. Mercury moves four degrees a day. Okay, so Mercury is going to pass Neptune on the day of the new moon with all that stuff I just told you about on Friday. So the spell is on, okay? And also the delirium, and look at it's in trine to Venus. Venus and Neptune and Venus and Mercury are in trine, and from Cancer. You have to know that there is, and especially relationships, the emotional understanding and seeing through to the truth of the divine. And it's hard though, because look at this Earth is on top of Eris on that day of the new moon. And, and Mars, we're passing. Earth is just starting by one degree to pass Mars. Look at that, Jupiter, I told you, Jupiter and Saturn are now in Aquarius, Jupiter's now in Aquarius. And so they're getting ready for the big conjunction. This is world changing radical events about people. Society, freedom, even the Dharma, the sun's at the center of this chart, by the way, not the earth, that the only way through the doorways into goodness is through f having the freedom the ability to have freedom, the ability to see 
to free yourself from anything and to also connect because Uranus is in an Aquarius is about connecting. Only to connect to the great and the divine and the truth and to have the freedom because that divine truth gives you freedom. Not anything that takes your freedom away because you choose to hold on to it because it's shitty. And the last chart is on Tuesday when we're ending the week, I'm only showing you this because Venus opposing Pluto, that'll be on that day of the first day of hell or heaven, Monday. And two, Venus and Mars square. And Earth and Venus are gonna, I, I didn't run all that, but I'm doing the math in my head, so two days prior, they're getting close. So, Venus is faster than Earth, so actually that's coming into next week. And that's Scorpio season, that's coming next week. And Mars and Venus, and then Mars is squaring Pluto on the same time on that Monday. We also have the Earth squaring Pluto during the new moon. Look at that, Earth and Eris square Pluto at 24, right? Earth's gonna come over to 24 on Saturday. It's insane, this whole week is the most intense week of our lives. And, and, I, and, I, and I'm, I'm sorry if maybe some people are gonna, whether I wanted to use Egyptian to, to this process or I wanted to use Christian theology of hell and heaven or you know, but, but, but hermetic alchemy, which, which I will show everybody just the one picture, like just, just to, to, just to study, like, and, and to really think about it in your life. If you, if you really, if you really look at life like this every day, and, and, and I hate to say it, we live in a world that has created so many distractions, so you don't pay attention to the world in this manner anymore. That you are not able to see the way that it works, okay? I'm gonna see if, it, here we go, boom. Oh, that's a small version, yeah, let's see, okay. Here we go. This is how to understand the universe. Why is Mercury at the center of all hermetic alchemy? And we're in a Mercury retrograde in Scorpio trying to reveal the truth and depose Uranus, which happens to be the higher octave Mercury. So this is the highest about heaven, right? So look at, you can see, like you can see the, the, the line between the reality and who is that with the switchblades that also stands on the lion, right? That tries to control the sun, that tries to control everlasting life is Satan. This is Kronos as he sits in the tree of life, right? With all the planets around it, that he controls everything. He controls time. What does he control? He controls the masculine, the phoenix that rises with the sun, which you would kind of associate more as a feminine aspect, but that's the more masculine form of the feminine when it rises near the end. And then the feminine version right here, which has the antelope, which actually is the moon, right? So you see the moon, but you see how they're chained. You see how the feminine is chained the masculine is chained to the wheel of life, to the stars, to the zodiac. If you literally are still living your life and you do not get this, and you actually still try and think astrology is just like a fun little toy, and you don't take it seriously, how are you going to get to heaven? How are you gonna get there? Unless you understand Mercury how this process works of the dark and the light, it's neutral and it understands and it's able to be willing to look into both, doesn't mean that you accept or you become both, but you, 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 you understand, you're willing to listen to both sides of the messages. And then the, the, the last picture I'll show you, because I think it's important, I wish, you know, it's so funny because that picture actually, if you just give me a second, Craig, here, that picture is actually something that I had to take a picture of myself. And I've done this before in a deep astrology, but we have so many new users, we have so many people, and um, the good news is that I can look up photos based upon, um, you know, years now, and I remember it was 2016, and I remember it was in, um, it was in October of 2016, yeah, it was, and it was, here it is. Okay, so plus two. All right, here is the picture. 
I, I literally took this picture from a book from the 15 or 1600s. Because it's not on the internet. I, I, I can't find it anywhere else. And I actually was at the... I was, I was here with Rick Levine. There it is. There's God. It looks like a heart, but it also looks like a chaotic cloud chaining a conscious person who understands the stars, feminine, that, that takes your feminine to understand the stars too. But then the, look at this chain on the earth that there's these, I don't know, I'm going to say it, he looks like Fauci. Right? The Fauci's of the world. Who think they understand it. Look at that. Like, oh, I understand the world. Monkey, monkey. And I want you to just like, really? Are you a monkey? Do you think that you've got it all figured out in your own sense? Because you're like, well, yeah, it's Friday or it's Saturday. I'm going to do this and it's Tuesday. I'm going to do that. And, you know, like, are you in monkey world? Or do you know how to truly, fully through this test and the partners you choose and everybody you choose around you in the world that you're going to choose? Because that's all we got is like the, the choosing of the divine or the monkey world. And how funny, they experiment on monkeys. That the last part that I want to remind you about this, this picture is this was in the 1600s. These three realms are the three outer realms of Uranus, right? Because there is the human and the giver, the water bearer. It's not holy water, but it's a giver, right? Right? But it's the human, which is Uranus. Then here's the ethereal angel, angels. Look at the angel wings. And they've got the trumpet horns, the judgment, which is Neptune. So there is something to say that Neptune does rule judgment. And the judgment card, you see, those, you see that. And then the third realm is the dark angel wings of death. And the edge in the darkness, Pluto. They knew about these three planets and realms before seeing them using alchemy, hermetic alchemy, understanding the planets, understanding the spheres in which they run in, understanding the stars that were Saturn's at the end, and then beyond that is the stars, but that they knew that there was ethereal energy beyond that in waves and in layers, and we are already understanding of these layers. So we are the ones writing this picture and what's outside of those new realms. Or are you going to just go stay in this? It looks like a record. Have you thought about that one? It's already preset. And have you thought about, are you willing to go right outside what the record is? And to whatever that might be, that's where heaven is. Because guess who's not in any of those realms and is outside is source. Trying to, whether, I don't think that back then over 400 years ago, that that arm that's holding that is looking like it wants to control it. It's looking like it's trying to pull them all up out of it. Even those that are ascended. But for some reason, the ascended are trying to pull the monkeys out. But at a point, how many times and how many chains come down to where are you going to continue to try and wake up your lover, wake up your friend, wake up your neighbor, and they're just going to still be the monkey that's trying to figure out the stupidest stuff and is, honestly, holding you back and holding source back and holding the collective back. So... You know, this, this, this world, is a, is, it's got the elements, but it's also got water. And, 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 it, and it's a very crazy world we live in. And, and, and I will say that
you know. We can get very lost in this monkey world. And the only way to make it out of this mess is to not energetically be servicing this record as a monkey. And I think it's ironic that, gosh, even Darwinism and stuff came way after this and the whole evolution from monkey to man. But maybe that's not really maybe true, maybe. Maybe it's more just the ancients looked at it like we're that close and relative. Maybe we're not, though. And maybe it's more like there are people that are monkeys and there are people that are divine and creator gods. There's a lot to process, I know, in this deep astrology, and I'm sending my best to you all, and all I can say at the end of the day is that it's not me, it's not anybody that can tell you how you're going to choose your story and redefine it and what you don't have to do that you don't want to do and what you do want to do and where you want to go and where it's all going to go for your bliss. And that's the most important. And that's the highest vibe. Make sure that you join High Vibe. You can catch me every day. You can catch all the other shows that we do. I love you all very much. And I'll see you on the next Deep Astrology in a New World.